Hope you're doing good. Mike are back with another video. Back here to talk about the Pixel 10 and Pixel 11. Like at this point, what is the point of trying to withhold any information the way things can just leak out into the the ethos of the technology world? Yes, the Google Pixel 10 has leaked with some very interesting details about AI and the cameras. And of course, with the Pixel 11, I mean, of course, anything can change. You're looking at two years from now before we see that. But let's get into some of these details to see exactly what Google has in store. Shout out to The Verge for covering this. A lot of their information they got in this article is actually from Android Authority. So as you see, report on report on report when it comes to some of the goodies everybody get into right now. And one of the first things we're going to talk about, of course, is the fact that the Tensor chip that will be coming in the upcoming Pixel will, will should house enough power to empower several different types of AI features. And one of the feature, features includes an on-device version of the Pixel's vid, video boost with night sight that brightens up video shot in the dark. So yes, that's AI, but that is also a combination of AI with the camera update because as we know, Google has gotten better year over year with their cameras so to speak specifically with their video quality we know iphones are very very good with video quality we know samsung is even pretty good with their video quality but google was always kind of lacking behind so it's good to see that that's something that they're going to be focusing on next year with the pixel 10 and the tensor g5 i would imagine should have the prowess needed to really handle that kind of quality boost that we want to see with the pixels and for me I think this is a good idea. I think the Pixel or the Tensor G5 may be of three nanometer uh, architecture as opposed to five and like a true three nanometer process, which means it's going to be a whole lot more power efficient and powerful from that perspective than what the, the G4 is right now, because it seems like there was just a little bit of wonkiness when it came to manufacturing during this process. I think even with the A17 Pro chip with the iPhone, there was just a weird or... Yes, A17, because I think it was kind of based off the M3 architecture. And we know like this was just kind of like a stopgap for chips for our devices. But this next coming year is going to have way better architecture when it comes to our chips in our phones that enable us to be able to use them on a regular basis. And so hearing that and seeing that is actually a good thing when it comes to the Pixel 10. It's something that we can actually look forward to. The Pixel's existing low-light features use AI to automatically adjust the exposure of your video, stabilize it, and reduce graininess. So, again, something that we are already able to see, but watch it skyrocket going forward with the Pixel 10 and Pixel 11. The Pixel 11's rumored ultra-low-light video feature could change this thanks to the more advanced tensor chip it's supposed to come with as well. And reports suggest that Google will start putting a custom processor into Pixel phones next year rather than the modified Exynos chipsets it's been using. So that also probably explains a little bit of that. What's actually interesting is it seems like the Pixels get better battery life than Samsung's own devices that run the Samsung Samsung Exynos chip. So I wonder, what, is, is it a software thing? Is it Google just cares a little bit more about the Exynos and Samsung themselves? I don't know. Let me let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Have you guys been seeing that to be the same case when it comes to the Samsung devices running on Samsung Exynos chips versus Google basically being made off of Samsung Exynos chips? Is there a big battery discrepancy there? Now, in terms of the G5 with the Pixel 10, it's supposed to also power a video generative machine learning feature that could offer AI powered video editing in the Photos app. And they're also working on a sketch to image capability for the Pixel 10 that could use AI to turn drawings into images similar to Samsung's Galaxy AI sketch to image tool. So again, this is gonna be pretty interesting to see here when it comes to video, what this is going to look like. I also like the fact that Google's really really trying to embolden the photos app to be like a one-stop gap for a lot of features for a lot of activity when it comes to our photos and videos so it's good to see that google definitely believes in their photos app and i also like it i mean i don't i'm not in it that often i use samsung's gallery app more so than anything but it is definitely good to see google take an app like photos very seriously because we know times in the past google just seems like they don't be caring about some of the apps sometimes they just let them slide 
but not with the photos app. There's also a speak to tweak editing tool and something called magic mirror as well, but details about these features are still slim. So I guess kind of similar. I don't know if you guys remember seeing an, AI, uh, an Apple's kind of WWDC event where, they, where you could ask S word to open an image and edit it to be more contrasty, this and the third, and then it would do it. I'm wondering if Google's gonna be trying to do something similar with speak to tweak where you can actually speak to Gemini or Google Assistant and essentially ask or request it to do specific editing features for your photos and videos and Gemini will do it for you. Like that, I think that's what they're referring to when it comes to speak to tweak. I'm, a, I'm actually a little bit excited for that to see how that actually works in real time for sure. And then the last few details, the Tensor G5 chip may be able to run stable diffusion locally. Don't ask me what that is, but basically this allows users to use it within an AI image generation app, Pixel Studio, which currently uses on-device AI and Google's cloud-based Imaging 3 model. So I guess the stable diffusion is Pixel Studio being able to generate AI images, I would imagine. And then other information that was uncovered uh, suggests that the Pixel 10 will support recording video 4K HDR 60, which is fire. And the Pixel 9 currently does 4K HDR 30 frames. So again, trying to catch up to Apple because Apple did push 4K 60 and 4K 120 with the iPhone 16. So it's going to, again, be interesting to see what Google is going to do over here when it comes to the Pixel 10 and Pixel 11, because by this time, we should be seeing some, some major, major advances when it comes to the Pixel that really makes it that much more competitive against Apple's iPhones and Samsung's Galaxy devices. So let me know down in the comment section below, do you use a Pixel? Are you interested in this information, these leaks and rumors? Is this something that would actually maybe garner some of your interest into rocking a Pixel device? The comment section is open for discussion. Again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure you ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, so all free those videos. So you and I can sit back, check, see what's cracking. And don't forget to hit that super thanks button down there by the like and dislike button, cash app and PayPal, and check the channel out for all the videos available to you. That's what it keep tech fresh and alive on this channel. It's your man Micah signing out until the next video. Wait for it.